Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and um, it feels like ages since I've made a YouTube video, and that's partly because I've been busy um, building fixed wireless networks around uh, VK4. Um, so we use uh, Ubiquiti gear. This is one of the little CPEs we use. We use um, one of the little customer side radios. If you want to hear a bit more about um, Ubiquiti's fixed wireless stuff, I know it's not really amateur stuff, but if it's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll make some videos about that. But um, that's not what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, before I get straight to it, I'll just show you another thing that's coming to the shack and um, see if you want to know a bit more about that. So Diamond have released a new antenna. It's a Sierra Romeo Hotel 770 Sierra. And uh, it's quite a large handheld antenna. It's for two and 70. Now they claim quite a bit of gain on this antenna. Um, I've never really thought of handheld antennas of really having gain as such, but if you look at it, it's about, let's see if I can get that in the camera, this long. So it's 70 centimeters or just over, well, well I guess about two feet, four inches. Um, and so far testing has been good, but what I really like about it is it's actually quite well balanced. So when you've got it on a handheld, it's not like some of the antennas they make um, that have like a coil right up here that, uh, you know, you kind of feel like you're swinging something, a baton around all the time. This is actually quite well balanced. So if you're interested in me doing tests on this sort of thing, um, let me know and I'll, I'll do a video on that. But anyway, without much further ado, I'll, um, I'll talk about the topic of the day. And the topic of the day is some of the, it's sort of like a bit of a wrap up of the IC7610 and some of the issues that have been found with it uh, over the last, I suppose, I suppose it's about just over six months now. Um, so I know you guys in the States uh, have about 12, uh, have a 12 month warranty. So I wanted to go through some of the issues that people have reported and tell you how to look out for them um, before your warranty expires. And uh, because, you know, I, I think that's a, a good thing to do when, you, when you've got a new piece of equipment, especially a, a big ticket item. It's always good just to do a final check, um, you know, before the warranty expires to see if there's anything that uh, needs replacing. So um, the first one I'll start with is the screen burn-in problem. Now, what I will do is I'll actually cut to some stills in a minute and uh, I'll put them up on the screen and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. But basically, some IC7610s, and I think it's actually probably gonna be quite a reasonable percentage, maybe one third to, to even a half, have an issue whereby the LCD screen suffers a bit of burn-in. You know, like back in the old days of CRTs where if you left the image on the screen too long, you'd you'd be able to see it uh, when it wasn't lit up. And the same, thing's happening, same thing is happening with the 7610 LCD. And it's really, really weird because um, as someone who's worked in IT for 15 years or more, you just don't see burn-in on, burn on LCD screens. It's, I've encountered it about once in my life. It was on a IBM, uh, sorry, a Lenovo ThinkPad um, X220 laptop. And the burning only happened about a good after about a good three years of 24/7 usage. Now, my I've actually had two 7610s that have suffered um, screen burning, and while it's not terribly, it it's not annoying, but it does. Oh, sorry, it's annoying in the sense that it reduces the crispness of the screen and it doesn't quite look as nice. It doesn't stop the radio working. Um, so my current one, which is doing it at the moment, I haven't bothered. Uh, lodging a warranty request yet because we have a quite a longer quite a, a bit longer warranty in Australia with uh, five years but it is there so it's something to look out for and I'll show you some pictures later but right now I'll cover how you can look out for it um, and here it is if you go into menu well the, there's two ways the easiest way is to turn the radio off and then turn the radio back on. And while it's booting up, the backlight will be on, but there won't be much on the screen and you'll be able to see um, any images that are, that are stuck there. The other way is to go into menu, 
settings, um, go to others, touch screen calibration, and when you do that, there's not much on the screen. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to actually see um, most of the burn-in images, except for you know what's it, where that writing is. Now, what you're looking for is, I guess, basically, especially on your left-hand side of your screen, there's quite a bit of uh, always-on images. Um, and we're talking like the VFO frequency, um, the sort of uh, different uh, uh, touch, um, sorry, um, what do you call it, touchscreen buttons on the side here, and also the touchscreen buttons below. They're the sort of the things that you'll see burnt in, especially the most prominent one on everyone I've seen, uh, which is two in my experience, my personal experience, is the VFO um, frequency settings that that will tend to come up. Now on mine here, uh, I doubt it. Might, you can see it on the camera, unfortunately, but I have, you, I have. You can see the the lines down there. You can see part of the VFO, but most importantly, the whole area is kind of lit up, um, and. That's what sort of takes away from the sharpness of the, the black and white of the screen and I don't, or the contrast, I should say. And it, it really does attract from a $5,000 radio. So if you find your radio has got this, I would book in a, a service call um, and uh, yeah, get it resolved. You're probably best off waiting for a little, for a little while. Um, you know, wait till it's quite prominent, wait to the end of your, you know, near the end of your warranty so that when you do uh, send it off, um, you've got one of the latest production screens or, or whatever as a replacement. And, um, you know, it might even be worth asking about them given it's a, quite an annoying flaw. Um, if you've got a 12-month warranty, I'd, I'd be tempted to ask uh, if they'd extend the warranty on the display only uh, because LCDs, they just don't have this phenomenon. It's not true burn-in. Um, it's if you read about it, it's sort of like lazy crystals. If the crystals are held too long in the same spot, uh, sometimes they can get lazy and not want to go back. So, unfortunately, turning your backlight down, turning your screen off, they don't seem to have resolved the issue. Now, the backlight doesn't help because it's actually the crystals being lazy. Um, they're filters, they're like shutters. So you can think of it as being like Venetian blinds that you can't quite shut properly anymore because the kids have played with the string too many times. I'll just finish this calibration. <clears throat> um, so that's one thing to look out for. And uh, look, I think it's just bad luck. It's, as I said, it's very rare for an LCD to have this issue. Um, it's very unfortunate that they the 7610 does suffer it, the 7300 doesn't suffer it. It has nothing to do with it being a touchscreen. It's just uh, probably a bad batch. Now, I was and I always advocate updating the firmware as much as possible because there are some suggestions that maybe this could be mitigated um, if uh, um, ICOM were to develop, say, a rolling screensaver which cycles the, uh, the crystals on and off and that sort of thing. And um, they have been aware of it for some time, so I hope they are investigating the issue and coming up with a solution. But I've certainly stayed up to date with my firmware and I advocate doing so just to see if it can help minimize this issue. But so far it hasn't. I'm on version 1.06. This particular radio has always been on 1.06 and it has developed a burning. Now, the second issue that's apparently reasonably common um, and uh, it was brought to my attention by a few friends on Facebook and um, there's a lovely website dedicated to it uh, by um, K Kilo Zero Papa India Romeo. Uh, let's have a look here, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Richard L. Donahue has written a lovely blog, uh, blog article which I will put um, in the description section of this video and it covers heat sinks falling off. Now, Apparently, and I haven't examined mine um, for, for this phenomenon, but apparently people have found um, that some of these little heat sinks here, so the, the little um, little square silver heat sinks, the type you might see on, say, a Raspberry Pi or, or a, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a chipset uh, chip on your motherboard, um, those little stick-on heat sink pads, 
uh, sorry, heat sinks with little sticky pads. A couple of them have been falling off. Um, now this isn't actually uh, isolated to ICOM. It turns out that um, the Flex community, with the Flex, I believe, at a rich, it's written here. Where is it? Um, let's have a look. Oh, I can't find it, but apparently um, it's also happened or it's been reported by owners of Flex 6400s and 67, uh, 6600s. So that's something to watch out for. It does seem like there's been a, a bad batch or a bad supplier of the little adhesive um, heat transfer pads, and it's something to watch out for. Not as big an issue as the... Um, as the um, the screen burning, and it, like it's something you could, I suppose, fix yourself out of warranty by buying a, a new bit of adhesive thermal transfer compound or adhesive thermal transfer pad. Um, but you know, it, it is something to look out for. If you pick your radio up and you find it's got a bit of a rattle, um, unplug everything, turn it off, take the screw, you know, or take the screws out if you're comfortable with it, or turn it off and 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 take the heatsink out. Um, or, or push it back on. Apparently some people have had success pushing them back on. Um, I don't think that would last personally. Um, or return it to ICOM if you're not comfortable and you feel like it should be um, fixed under warranty, which you've got every right to do so. But that's something to look out for. Now there have been a few other, um, I guess you'd say spurious issues with the 7610. Um, my first unit, as many people will know, it, its output power um, just dropped off after about a month of ownership. It just wouldn't uh, wouldn't produce any power, and it just went down and down and down until I couldn't get anything out of it. So that's happened to me. Uh, it hasn't happened to anyone else in the world that I'm aware of. A few people have had um, reports of uh, audio glitches, like the audio dropping out a few times, and they had to power cycle the radio. But once again, that's only been, I've only seen that reported on the latest firmware by one person. And that very well could be something to do with maybe a heat sink dropping off and uh, a bit of instability in the system. You don't know, but um, it's just things to look out for. Uh, aside from that, version 1.06, the firmware does seem very stable. The random tone issue has been fixed. Um, thank you to Icon for being very proactive about fixing that. Um, and other than that, it's been a, a very uh, lovely radio to own. Now, even despite having, you know, uh, an IC, two IC7610s with uh, screen burning issues and an IC7610 with um, the progressive drive failure, I can't think of anything else on the market like this radio, um, especially with the recent price drop. I mean, isn't that fantastic uh, that they're, bringing it uh, to a more, more affordable point. Uh, and the reason is it's just it's just beautifully executed. The, the dual receivers are lovely. The high-speed waterfalls are lovely. Um, the fact it can drive a transverter, it's got external clock input. Um, if you look at the back panel of this thing and you look at the back panel of, say, the new FT-DX101D, uh, you can just tell that this radio has more capabilities. Uh, you know, it's got the Ethernet port for remote access. so. I wouldn't let um, let some of these issues put you off. I still think it is the king um, of the SDRs. I I quite like the look of the new FT, FTDX 101D. Um, might have to get one to try out. But as as far as uh, if you were to, to buy one, um, I'd still say the 7610 really delivers a lot of value for your money. Um, and the usability is there. It is, it is a beautiful radio to use. I, I do love owning it, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd better release a little video just covering some of the issues, um, some of the things to look out for before your warranty expires, and just an update uh, about what other people have found and some of the little traps they've found. But other than that, uh, on the on the Facebook groups, the, the response is overwhelmingly positive. People love owning this radio. I haven't seen anyone post about how they regret buying it. Um, it, it is a it is a darling radio. So I'll wrap this video up. Please let me know if you would like any more information. I will attach also in the description a few pictures of what the screen burn-in looks like. 
Um, I will try and put them up at the end of this video for a bit. Um, I'll put one up of my first radio. Um, I'll put one up of this current radio. And I'll put one up uh, that another VK has uh, sent to one of our local dealers. So you'll see a few examples um, of the screen burn in problem so you can identify it on your own. Um, I will try and for anyone waiting uh, on some of the FT 818 or 817 videos uh, regarding some of the little linear amplifiers. I'm trying, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of those videos out shortly. And um, I just wanted to say, let me know if you're interested in learning how to do IMD or two-tone measurements um, by yourself, because in this day and age, you don't need expensive equipment. And uh, I'm quite happy to do a little video just showing the setup I use and uh, just doing a little instructional about how to go about doing it yourself. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Let me know if you're you're waiting on the, um, the, the um, well, I'll, I'll go grab one. You know, the review of this little, uh, Yase uh, FT818 and I guess KX3 amplifier. This one's pretty cool. It's actually got uh, auto band select, so it follows your 817 around. So that's uh, that's what's going to be coming up next. Um, and also, I guess, let me know if you're interested in hearing about the Yasu wires system. I'm quite interested in wires, so uh, I've been playing around with it for some time. If you want to hear more about that, let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, I hopefully will put out some more video, videos this weekend. So I'll say 73. Thanks for watching and do stick around for a couple of seconds to see some of those um, screen burning images I was talking about. Catch you later. This is Jared from VK, uh, Jared, VK3 Bravo Lemma from Rate My Radio.